Hey America, I'm Crack Senior Editor Josh Sargent, and I'm here to talk about video games. Specifically to say that we let them down, guys. They were supposed to be the future. Interactive storytelling was supposed to surpass movies as the new art form of a new generation, but we won't let it. We're holding them back because you can't admit that the level of violence in video games is smearing banana paste on your chest and calling yourself the king of France insane. Look, game bros and game ladies, I don't think violence in video games is a bad thing. I just think it's weird that it's the only thing. Four of the five best-selling games of 2015 are just about killing people. And when I say about, I mean the reason we play these games is so we can pretend to kill people. With guns, specifically because we don't want any innovation getting between us and scratching our murder itch. One Twitter user pointed out that at the 2016 E3 Gaming Expo, 89% of the games shown were about solving problems with violent retribution. And people lost their shit at him just for saying that. Why? He's literally doing math. That's gaming. If anybody watching isn't a games folk, and if so, rude. I want to point out that games can do a lot of stuff that isn't murder. There's The Sims. There's Minecraft. That's all I can think of off the top of my head. But we gamers still choose to spend our gaming dollar almost exclusively on recreations of the most f***ed up shit we see in the news. Now look, I enjoy casual violence as much as I enjoy cigarettes or toilet hooch, but of course it's weird. When we pretend it doesn't look weird, that just makes us look more weird. Compare these games to the top five highest grossing movies of 2015. It's still mostly violence, but at least it's different kinds of violence. We have laser sword fights, dinosaur fights, car and gun fights, superhero fights, and I didn't see minions, but I assume there's some graphic torture or something. I get it though. This is a sensitive topic for a lot of people because we remember a time when people were trying to make video games not a thing anymore. In the 90s, there was serious discussion about whether or not games were causing all the problems in the world and needed to be banned forever. Or at least it seemed that way to us because we were kids and didn't realize that these kinds of controversies happen like once a decade and always end up being as ephemeral and meaningless as, say, Piers Morgan. But today, we spend $25 billion a year on video games. 25 billion, that's four times more than we spend on guns and look at how powerful the gun industry is. We're an important part of the economy now, so at the risk of sounding cynical, even if scientists wearing lab coats and speaking in European accents conclusively proved that video games caused real-world violence, they probably still wouldn't take them away. Because gaming is expensive enough now to be a rich people hobby, and rich people hobbies can be literally anything. We're safe. Who cares? So let's just go full punk rock and admit that gaming is super f the anger thing probably isn't a coincidence. Already, I know that some of you are questioning whether I'm a true gamesman. So let me be clear here and say that my gamer cred is unfucking impeachable. When I learned the true meaning of loyalty and friendship, it wasn't because some friends and I discovered a dead body in the woods. It was from Minx in Baldur's Gate Go and his unwavering devotion to Go boo the miniature giant back. space hamster. So step on. And yet, Despite this obvious pedigree, I still don't like to call myself a gamer because that word seems less associated with video games and more associated with being a dick on the internet. In fact, Google literally auto-completes the word gamer to Gamergate, which was an internet harassment campaign with ties to white supremacy groups. So just searching for my hobby on the internet puts me three clicks away from being on yet another government watch list. I can also tell you anecdotally that writing about video games attracts way more internet hate than writing about anything else. Compare the comments under a this movie is sexist article to the this video game is sexist article on literally any website and you'll see the difference. Also, everybody knows this. Even Reddit. At a certain point, that's not a coincidence. And that certain point was six years ago when people started advertising to us using our inability to control our temper as their gimmick. Anyway, games. Mostly about killing. Gamers. Mostly mad all the time. Maybe a link. Not a crazy idea. So here's our opportunity to be better than most professional sports and tackle an obvious problem head on before anybody gets hurt. We don't actually care about story. I've read hundreds, probably, of articles about why video game stories are so bad. Why, the articles ask. Why are they so bad? I'll tell you. It's because we gamers, you and me, don't give a f it's not why we play, and it never has been, and it never will be. The stories don't matter to us. Now, games have good stories. Last of Us has a cool story, and if you watch all the cutscenes on YouTube, it's a pretty good movie. In fact, you could make the argument that that's the best way to enjoy The Last of Us' story. Want proof? I'm making that argument right now. You just got told, welcome to the internet, I am your god. Anyway, I gotta spoil this game for you. You spend most of The Last of Us as a big tough man named Joel protecting Ellie, a young girl. At the end, you find out that the only way to cure the world's zombie problem is to kill Ellie. But Joel can't let that happen, and he kills a bunch of scientists, escapes with Ellie, and lies to her about what happened. For the ending to work emotionally, like as a story, you have to believe that Joel sees Ellie as vulnerable and feels a responsibility to protect her, and yet, She's invincible during the entire game. She can't get hurt or even seen by enemies because if they could see her, the whole game would have been a huge pain in the ass. So a game can't compromise the fun for the sake of the story, even when the game's main appeal is the story. Why? 
because we just want to beat people to death with a baseball bat. Again, no judgment because that's awesome, but that's still why we're playing. And the thing is, if we don't like a game's story that gets in the way of the gameplay, that means we don't actually care if games are art or not. Remember when Roger Ebert said that video games could never be art, we got all mad for that stupid old man because he doesn't even play video games. And then remember how we spent the next decade doing nothing to prove him wrong? Yes, video games can be art, and there are a ton of incredibly talented artists working in the industry, but we don't care. And when we pretend to, we sound like a teenager explaining that watermelon vodka is actually good liquor. Look, maybe Destiny has a rich and evocative mythology, but that's not what keeps people signing in every week. They're just doing that to get their fat loot so they can fight the tougher monster, and that, my friends, is different. That's the designer putting us in a Skinner box and getting us addicted to simulated accomplishments. I'm not sure what emotional truth you can get out of spending all day leveling up, but I do know that almost every video game review I've ever read has talked about whether the game hooks you and its replay value. Look, if we really cared about art, we wouldn't have reacted to Mass Effect 3's ending by demanding that they patch it in a way that lets us fulfill our power fantasy. And we wouldn't have created a petition to get a review of Uncharted 4 removed because we disagreed with it. Because a big part of art is personal interpretation, not consensus. Demanding consensus is actually one of the most anti-art things you can do. So, if being fun and distracting is all it takes for something to count as art, then Jerry Springer counts as art, and professional wrestling, and making list-based comedy videos for the internet. And just as an aside, Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima also thinks that games aren't art, and he's the guy who allowed me to create the most beautiful moment I have ever seen on a TV screen. <laughs> Video games are not relaxing. When you talk to people about video games and bring up the stuff I've brought up, the violence, the lack of attention to story, the argument often becomes that they are a stress reliever. They're relaxing. You feel pent up rage and you play video games and you feel relaxed. The truth is, that's not how anger, or stress relief, or relaxation work. When you indulge in a violent video game fantasy, you're stimulating your brain, but not your body, in such a way that it not only exacerbates the frustration and anger, but associates frustration and anger with aggression in a way that is unhealthy in the long term because aggression is unhealthy. Look. I know the research is conflicted. And yes, I know who Craig Anderson and Christopher Ferguson are. If you don't, Google it, it's boring. But if you put that aside, then you already know the truth. So let's just be honest. Games can be exciting and exhilarating and infuriating, but they're not relaxing. None of us have ever drifted off to sleep playing Mario. We may have passed out face down on our keyboard playing EverQuest, but it's kind of different. Games are designed to be addictive. We sound like f***ing junkies when we say we find them relaxing, that they relieve our stress. Like we just need a hit of Call of Duty to take the edge off. So let's be honest. There's nothing wrong with saying that you play them for fun. There's nothing wrong with saying that we like ripping a demon's head in half because we're broken inside. I mean, it's better than admitting we're addicted to something. I can't, I'm not even allowed to light this in here. It's, this is all bull It's all fake. None of this is real. I'm just in a room. I don't even smoke. I just wanted to look cool. This, it's all lies. It's all lies. Like and subscribe though.